Let's check out that great infamous you know what problem of the day. It says to find the value of x if the first term of an arithmetic sequence is x minus 2, the fifth term is 2x, and the common difference is x minus 7. Boy, this one's kind of a lula. It's got a lot of reading, and it's a different take on arithmetic sequences. So let's read it again one more time. It says find the value of x. We've got a first term, a fifth term, and a common difference sort of given to us. All right. So let's take a look how we're going to work this through, how we're going to make it on this problem. Now, one thing you got to remember here is this time they didn't give you numbers, did they? I mean, there is absolutely except one number, fifth term. You do know that's going on here. So, wow, let's see how we're going to work this one out. Everybody ready to put their hats on and think a little bit? First of all, we are looking for an X that's going to give us these three things that we'll have to work together. Now, what's the formula? Oh, there's always a formula, it seems like. In this case, the formula really is going to be necessary. But how do you get to an arithmetic sequence? Well, you, I'm going to use A for the term, all right? And to the nth term is equal to the first term of the sequence, which we've got something about that. We've got this x minus 2, which will fit into the program here in just a second, plus n minus 1. And then we're going to multiply it times d. That's basically the formula for working arithmetic sequences. You've got to remember that n minus 1 is extremely important because that brings things into check. Now, what are we going to do? You say, what are we going to do? Right? Well, we're going to substitute a lot of things. Even though we have no real numbers except for actually n, we know n is 5. So we're going to go ahead and start working that. We've got a sub 5, or the fifth term, equals my first term. Oh, we did say is what? x minus 2. Just put it in there. That wasn't a hard, was it? Um, we're going to actually, we're going to fix that a5 in just a second, all right, because we know something about it too, don't we? And the common difference, well, n is 5, so we're going to say plus 5 minus 1 times, oh, our difference, we got that under control also. That's going to be x minus your 7 right there. So at this point, things looking interesting. I think they are, and we're going to work through this thing. Now, on the left-hand side, let's go ahead and replace the fifth term, we know what that is, it's 2x. So we're going to put it right in there, and we're probably going to drop, there we go, they're ahead of me today on that. That's great. Thank you, Connor. And we got x minus a 2, and then we're going to do this 4, and I want to put one more thing in here. That needs to be around a parenthesis. That parenthesis has got to be around it because that's the whole common difference. So we're substituting, I can't just put x minus 7 because that would say, 4x minus 7. That's not what it is. It's 4 times x minus 7. So already things are looking a little bit better, and some of you are going like, oh my goodness, this is going to take another column, isn't it? Probably will. Probably will. Now we've got 2x over here. Let's keep the x minus 2 one more time, one more line, and then we're going to get 4x minus what? We're distributing. All right, that's why we want to make sure that parenthesis gets in there. We're going to distribute it out. It's going to be minus 28. Whew, still a lot of x's, aren't they? But you know what the good news is? We can get them all together. So we got five x's together here. I like that. And we got a minus 30 on this side. And we have, oh goodness, 2x on the... You see what's going on? Everybody see what's going to happen? We're going to lose the 5x. And we're going to move right up here and see where it's going to take us, all right? So we have 2x, let me pre-pride it there, 2x equaling 5x minus 30. It's not so bad, is it? It really isn't so bad. Once you put the numbers and the possibilities and the x's in the right place and you do the right things, life is good. Speaking of life being good, let's go ahead and subtract 5x from both sides. And since we got the 5x, let's lose it. And that's going to give me a negative 3x to the left. Life is good. Negative 30 on the right. Now, the reason I said that is because it looks like we're going to get a positive value for x. Not that it matters, but we're at least going to get something that comes out even and actually a, a bonus that it is coming out positive. So x looks like it's going to be 10. That's the problem. That's what we said. You know me. You know me. I want us to be sure it checks out. So some of you are going like, okay, what are we going to do? Everywhere we see an x, we are going to put our values in. So it looks like the fifth term was, uh, what, 2 times 10. So it's going to be fifth term. Our a sub n equals 20. It looks like the first term, 
Judging from 10 minus 2, our A1 is going to equal 8. That sounds good. And our common difference is going to be 10 minus 7, so the D is equal to 3. Now, let's just do something with this. By the way, it is a positive 3, right? Everybody agree on that? Because 10 minus 7 gives you 3, so you've got a positive 3. Which means we're going to add 3 to our first term every time. So we start with 8, so we add 3, that gets us to where? 11. You know I'm brave on this, right? There's A2. Let's add 3 more. That gets us to, what, 14. Uh-huh, There's that's um, A3. A4 gets us 3 more. We're going to be at 17, and you know what? Fifth term is at 20, and that's what we're trying to look out for. So all of these check back through and get the nice arithmetic sequence, all right? So you can even write the numbers now. And folks, that's your problem of the day. How about it? That one looks hard, but just getting through the formula kicks really pretty easy.